Hi guys, welcome to Ministry Guy Podcast. How are you guys doing? Today is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is a good day. It's so hot down here in New South Wales. How is it going over there? Uh, people in Nigeria, my people from South Africa, the Canadians, the US. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching and subscribing to this channel. If today is your first time, don't forget we have tons of resources on our website to help you. Maybe you're just starting out in your ministry and your journey, you need clarity. You are in the right place. Uh, okay, so today it is my assignment to help you fulfill your ministry making it simple easy and fun all right today is all about keeping it simple and achieving more keep your ministry simple achieve more you know the way we see ministry can literally affect the result we get from that all right you know the way you see church gatherings will determine your Output, all right. The way you do things will determine your results. So your definition to ministry will literally determine what you get in result. Uh, example: People who see ministry as business will take ministry, we do ministry in a way of business or or circular way of leadership, and because of that, they also get the same result. People will see ministry as a place of power. As a place of a counter, we literally structure their ministry also to be in that way where there is healing, miracles, and crazy stuff like that. Well, I actually believe in the powers part. Also, I also believe also in being able to do it in a good way where people who don't want to go to church, who feel like uh, the miracles and stuff are fake, where they can literally come to the church and say, yeah, I I like this environment. Okay, let's stay here. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. So, it's my job to help you. Keeping it simple, achievable. What has God called you to do? Don't take too much load on yourself. You know, sometimes I've actually seen people who wanted to start a church. And the first thing they are thinking about is getting a building, getting a, a musical instrument, sound instrument, and all that. Those are good stuff. But you know what? That's not the way to begin. <laughs> I will shock you. That's not the way to begin. And I'm going to be sharing with you my first failed church planting. So stay tuned and just listen to me, guys. Um, what God has given to you is your voice. God has given you a voice for this generation. And is this it is the time to use that voice. You don't need a musical instrument before you start reaching out to people. We are in the days of social media. Like a lot of people are going online and stuff. Of course, I'm doing a podcast online. Why not? Those are good. Some of you, God might not actually call you to do that. All right, you will actually start from a different way. Okay, there are people their ministry is just online, there are people their ministry is not even online, but yet they are making a global impact. All right, God has called you, make your ministry simple, make your calling simple. How can you do that? Okay, number one rule is this do not take up what God has not called you to do. I know strategizing and doing all those stuff are good, but don't go faster than God, all right? When God gives you a vision, just stay put to what God has called you to do, okay? For example, let's say God called you to just reach out and be an evangelist, share your faith with somebody, don't start a church, all right? If God has called you to start a church, don't just start somewhere. Don't just don't just get a building and expect people to come. Please, you need to go outside and evangelize. And there comes my experience. How my first church planted failed. When we moved to Australia, uh, 2019, uh, it was, I think after that year, it was like COVID. So there was, uh, everybody was uh, locked down. Everywhere was locked down. Uh, we're not allowed to go out. So we're going to go to church and stuff like that. And I came to Australia with the fire. And uh, 
just sitting there in the house was not really good. So I said, you know what? Uh, what am I going to do? Uh, maybe we should start a church, you know? I know that I have fire inside of me. I wanted to start a church. Why not? I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. And I said, yeah, why not? God didn't say, no, let's start a church. But one thing that I did so wrong was that I didn't have disciples. I've not actually disciple anyone. So I just, what I did was just get a building. I started getting the building, started working out the papers to register the church and stuff like that. And those are wrong. Well, the first day people literally came. We had some few people who were helping us. And there was a particular people who were just giving to the ministry. And it was so good that we were doing well. But it got to a time. I found out that the church was going in the direction that I don't want it to go. Why? Because I didn't do the groundwork. I did not disciple people. I've not actually taught people. I've not actually preached. There is no one that can literally say this is my convert. You know, I've not grown them up. These are people that came from different churches. And here is this. When you start a church and Christians come from different churches, they come with their own problems and with their own baggages. Not just that one. They came with their church baggages. Some of them is going to tell you about how nasty the pastor is, how terrible the church is. And those are the things you are going to hear because you are dealing with people who have been Christian over the years and they have no fruit. And that's what happened to me. They just want a new church. Maybe they are looking for something. Some of them are looking for blessing. They want God to bless them. Oh, they are looking for miracles. Some of them are looking for life partner. So they felt like, okay, this new church might actually be the, the good ones to go, you know. Yeah, maybe I can find somebody who don't know me before, you know, stuff like that. And you know what? Those are the people that I got. And I was the one doing the work and I literally burned out. It was literally too much for me. And you know what? I had to stop it. Okay? So, and that is how my first church planting failed. So, this is my best advice for you. If you are called to start a church, listen to me carefully. Do not get the building or the sound equipment yet. Go outside there. You can do your service on the street. You can do your service under the tree. You can do your service in the park. You can do it anywhere. But disciple somebody first. At least get about four to six people that you can literally call that these people are people that you discipled. These are people that caught the division. Then you can start house fellowship. From house fellowship, you pray, you do all that, you lay the visions, and by the time you start a church, it will be something that you have already started doing. It will be something new. And you know what? That is how you can keep your life so simple, your ministry is so simple. And you know what? That is the best way to start a church. And I just give you tips that will literally help you. Because I've seen a lot of people, they are just so confused. They say, well, I need to get a building. I need to do that. But that is not the way it starts. Disciple somebody first. Reach out to somebody. Let them be your disciple. Even before Jesus started, Jesus has to find the 12 disciples. He discipled them and see the amazing results they have achieved. Now, all of us, we are all Christians today because of those 12 disciples. Jesus died for us, yes. But because those dis disciples, they spread the gospel. They carried the vision. So, you also disciple somebody, somebody that will carry the vision with you before you go and read the beauty. In fact, at the battle of fact, even starting in your house is really good. By the time you expand and you enlarge where the place cannot contain you anymore, then you can go and rent another building. That is the best way to do. And the resources will be there at that time. You know, that's my best advice. I'm just keeping it real. I'm keeping it simple for you because at the end of the day, I'm not trying to pro, uh, to give you content just for you to know uh, that it's ministry guide podcast. No, that you fulfill your calling. That's my assignment. And I believe you can fulfill your calling. If you are listening to me today and you are confused, reach out to me. I will encourage you. It is my journey. This is what God has given me. I have passion to see everyone outside here fulfilling the Great Commission. So thank you for joining today. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.